Home Labs are a great way to improve your skill set, to get your hands on new services and solutions, and just overall to play around with cool and exciting new technologies. In today's episode, I'm going to talk to you guys about Home Lab Q&A. What are my recommendations for investing in a home lab? Hopefully you guys will benefit from my experiences, my mistakes that I have made, as well as things that I think are important in a home lab. So stick around, let's cover some ground with this really cool topic. The sponsor for today's episode is Cameo. Cameo is a virtual app delivery platform that allows businesses to have a secure and cost-effective cloud desktop solution, and it delivers what businesses and end users need the most. Not full virtual machines, but business-critical applications. Cameo's virtual application delivery platform enables your end users to quickly and easily access all of the Windows and internal web applications they need securely from a modern web browser within any digital workspace and without the need for VPN connections. Cameo reduces costs, it increases flexibility, and allows you to deliver legacy or modern Windows apps in a browser or Chrome OS environment with one-click failover to the cloud. This is an awesome solution that I foresee heavily disrupting traditional VDI infrastructure environments. Be sure to visit cameo.com and sign up for a free trial to try out the solution for yourself. Question one is inevitably, how do you get started with a home lab environment? I think a lot of people, when they think about a home lab, they may get intimidated when they see someone with a rack of equipment behind them and they think, wow, I've got to go out, I've got to buy a server rack, I've got to buy multiple servers, I've got to buy networking gear. I've got to cable it all in. And I totally think that that is not where most will want to start. In fact, with a home lab, starting very small is always a great bet to, first of all, see if a home lab is something that you do want to invest further in. You never want to just throw a bunch of money into a lab environment only to find that it's not really something that you want to maintain long term. Starting very small is a great way to do that. Now, how would you start small? Many people start with just simply a workstation class machine. And even if you don't want to invest in dedicated hardware, a type two hypervisor such as a desktop virtualization platform like VMware Workstation or even a free solution like VirtualBox is a great way to dual purpose hardware that you may already be using, such as a laptop or a desktop that you have extra memory and CPU resources. That is a great place to start. That way you can spin up a virtual machine or a couple of virtual machines to play around with a few technologies that you wanna get your hands on. Once you do that and you say to yourself, you know, I want to run this more as a dedicated environment. I want to, in fact, run this in a way that maybe I have these virtual machines up and running 24 seven or many hours a day outside of when you're actually sitting at your desktop or a laptop environment. Then you may want to start thinking about dedicated hardware. And again, a workstation class machine, many people even purchase very inexpensive thin client class devices, add some extra memory, and you can easily purchase those off of eBay for just a couple of hundred dollars. And you can run a few virtual machines on those types of hardware. Whatever the case, starting small and working your way up incrementally in a home lab is certainly my recommendation. In case you're wondering what I started with specifically, it was an old Dell Precision workstation running VMware Workstation. And I did run it in a dedicated way. So I had a OS loaded, I had VMware Workstation, and then I started running just a few virtual machines that I wanted to access day in and day out, playing around with various technologies. And that's how I got started. Once I determined that that was something I wanted to invest in and that was really cool and fun for me, then I invested in more dedicated server class hardware and started running some enterprise hypervisor solutions on top of that hardware. 
My next home lab tip, and one that I have been asked about before, is nested virtualization. Nested virtualization is a great way to get your hands on more complicated or more complex architecture and topologies without actually having to invest in physical server hardware. Well, nested virtualization allows you to run a hypervisor inside of a virtual machine. So in other words, instead of having three physical hypervisor nodes, you can actually load up three virtual machines inside of a physical server and you can build out more complex topologies such as building a server cluster without actually having the physical hardware. Not only does this save the hardware investment in actually purchasing physical nodes to use with a hypervisor, it also makes lab environments exceptionally easy to build as well as you can leverage other technologies such as snapshots. So you build up three virtual machines that represent your hypervisor nodes. You can snapshot those hypervisors. You can roll those hypervisors back. You can essentially rinse and repeat various environments if you want to do that. And that is a great way to learn. You try something, if something breaks, you roll it back to a point in time that everything is working. You continue that process until you perfect whatever skill or whatever solution or service you're trying to implement. And I, to this day, continue to use nested virtualization. Even though I have multiple physical nodes, nested virtualization provides all of those benefits that I just mentioned. Being able to quickly stand up environments, roll those environments back, try new things. And that way, if you break an entire cluster, you have not broken your production cluster in your home lab environment. So definitely I recommend getting your feet wet with nested virtualization, using that in a home lab, as opposed to investing in physical hardware. Now there is a balance between both, but when you find that right balance, you can leverage your physical hardware more efficiently to run nested environments without that additional investment in servers and networking gear. Well, this next question can elicit battles across the internet of home labbers everywhere. And that is what is the best hypervisor to use in a home lab environment. And I am certainly not going to take sides in that battle as I think there are many great options. Which hypervisor you choose in your home lab environment may be right for you and someone else may choose something different. Each of us have our own use cases and our own thoughts around this process. Many prefer to stand up diehard, free and open source home lab environments, meaning the hypervisor must be open source and all of the technologies around that need to be open source. And that is great. There are so many great open source hypervisors and other technologies and solutions out there. I currently run VMware vSphere in my home lab environment. And vSphere is a paid commercial product, as most of you are aware. Why do I choose to run an enterprise solution in my home lab environment? One reason for that for me is many of the production environments that I work with today are running VMware vSphere on premises. So that means I want to be able to have my hands on and my skill set meet with the production environments that I see in production data centers. That's one reason that I have chosen to run VMware vSphere inside of my home lab environment. Also, the vMug Advantage subscription is $200 a year and even less with coupon codes, meaning you get full access to not only an enterprise hypervisor, but all of the VMware catalog and services and solutions that are offered there. So I think that is a tremendous value. That being said, VMware vSphere is not the only option out there. There are many great hypervisors that I have uh, created video content, uh, blog posts on, such as Proxbox, Hyper-V, VirtualBox, VMware Workstation, many others that are not only paid products, but also free and open source products. The hypervisor that you choose is totally up to you. And I think any hypervisor allows you to get your hands on great technologies. It allows you to hone your skill set. It allows you to play around with various solutions such as containers, such as Docker, Kubernetes, all of those new and upcoming cloud native technologies. Many of those hypervisors allow you to do that. So there's not one that's better than the other. Choose the one that fits your use case. Choose the one that you want to learn. 
choose the one that you are comfortable with and that long term is going to meet your goals in your home lab. This next question is a really important and really great question if you're thinking about a lab environment. What about virtual machines or containers? Do you need to choose between one or the other? Is one better than the other? First of all, let's think of it this way. Containers and virtual machines are different technologies and both serve different use cases. Both are extremely important in today's modern infrastructure. And the reason I say that is virtual machines have certainly not gone away. Containers have created a new way to solve many of the issues that we used to only have virtual machines to solve. And there are many use cases that containers are a much better fit, such as today's modern cloud native architectures, spinning up CI CD pipelines, being able to create application environments very quickly compared to virtual machines containers are certainly much better suited for those types of use cases. Now, let me say this, containers and virtual machines are very complementary technologies and solutions. In fact, most container hosts that are ran today are in fact virtual machines. Virtual machines also allow you to run container hosts on dissimilar platforms. So if you're running a physical Windows hypervisor host, obviously that kernel is going to be a Windows kernel. You're not going to be able to run Linux containers directly on top of that Windows kernel. You're going to have to have a Linux container host to be able to run Linux containers. So we get the point that virtual machines are required to solve those issues oftentimes that we have in running containers and it allows us to quickly and easily spin up container hosts. What applications and what home lab services are perhaps a better fit for containers as opposed to virtual machines? I certainly myself am looking in this direction today in my home lab environment. If I have a solution that has a simple web front end and a simple database back end, such as uh, Apache server on the front end and a very small MySQL database that services that application, those type of applications are very well suited for a container environment. So containers can uh, quickly and easily spin up the application side and, and then you can use persistent data volumes to contain your database backends for those containers. Those are great use cases for a container solution. If you're running a Windows domain controller or some other monolithic application that requires a big fat virtual machine to run that application, you of course are going to be looking at running a full virtual machine. Now the great thing is running containers where possible allows you to make much more efficient use of your home lab hardware as you're not having to run an entire virtual machine with the disk space, the memory, the, the compute that is required for that virtual machine. Instead, you're able to spin up that container that has a much smaller footprint from compute memory and storage perspective. So you're going to be able to self-host much more dense environments with those containers along with virtual machines as opposed to just simply spinning up a virtual machine for every self-hosted service in your home lab. Another question that home labbers often ask is, should I be using the cloud along with a home lab? And the answer I think to that question is certainly if you want to play around with cloud technologies. Today, cloud is gaining momentum and that's an understatement. In fact, most enterprise organizations are using cloud to some degree. The majority are using either infrastructure as a service or software as a service environments in a cloud service provider, such as Microsoft, Google, or Amazon. With that being said, learning about cloud, learning cloud technologies is a great way to improve your skill set that's going to be relevant from now till the foreseeable future. That doesn't stifle those self-hosting your own home lab environment, in my opinion, simply due to the fact that you're going to find that for the most part, if you're going to run a 24 by 7, 365 home lab, 
you are not going to be able to afford doing that. It's much more uh, cost effective to do that in a local home lab environment. That being said, learning cloud technologies, mixing cloud solutions into your lab environment, creating VPN connections to a cloud environment, maybe on a free tier of Amazon AWS or Microsoft Azure is a great way to start learning about real world architecture and solutions that organizations today are having to configure and think through hybrid environments, architecting on-premises resources, connecting to public cloud environments. So definitely, I would never tell anyone not to learn a certain technology as I believe it's all relevant and all good to know uh, things that are going to increase your own skill set, make you more relevant for modern architecture, hybrid architectures that are common in today's enterprise data center environments. What about licensing? This is an area that there are many great resources out there. If you're looking for Microsoft licensing, definitely leverage the Microsoft Evaluation Center where you can actually pick up a 180 day evaluation license of Microsoft Windows Server. And this is a great way to spin up a six month evaluation of Windows Server to spin up lab environments to test out and play around with Microsoft technologies or to run various server resources in your home lab for a period of time. That is a way to do that in a free way because we all know that Windows Server licensing is not cheap. So leveraging those Microsoft evaluation licenses is a great way to do that. For myself, I've already mentioned a VMUG subscription. If you're a VMware vSphere fan or want to leverage VMware vSphere, VMUG Advantage is a great solution to do that. For a couple hundred dollars, you can have a full access for a year to the entire VMware vSphere catalog. Outside of that, you can leverage Proxmox, which is free and open source. You can use a desktop hypervisor. If you own a Windows client license and you're running Windows client version Pro or Enterprise, you have access to Hyper-V as part of that license, and you can leverage that for your home lab. Many free and open source solutions on the Linux side of things allow you to run hypervisors, free and open source solutions, and the sky's the limit. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video covering home lab Q&A, and maybe this is a series of videos. Let me know in the comments if you guys like content like this. If these questions and many others we can go deeper on would be ones that you would like to have discussed on a regular basis. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. Please do like the video, subscribe to the channel. I've got more great content coming your way. As always, keep home labbing, stay safe out there, and I hope to see you guys soon.